Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games and welcome back to 3D Games and Game Maker Studio 2. We are talking about collisions. This, as I say at the beginning of pretty much every video, is a series where I'm implementing different 3D collision checks in native GML without the need for fancy DLLs or anything. If you have not seen the earlier videos in this series, I recommend going back and getting caught up on those because each of these videos is going to build on the previous ones. Today we are going to be finishing off the last two primitive shape collisions which I have yet to uh, which I have yet to implement. Specifically, those are going to be three functions. Those are going to be axis aligned bounding boxes against themselves, axis aligned bounding boxes against planes, and uh, planes against themselves. And um, that's going to be it. We've already done uh, points and spheres. We've already implemented the different collision checks for each of them. And now it is time to do uh, abs and planes. All right, let's start with abs. Uh, uh, checking to see if two axis aligned bounding boxes are colliding is going to feel a lot like checking to see if a point is contained within one. And we're just basically going to be checking the, um, the extremes of each of the, um, of each of the shapes. And, uh, we can start by saying, uh, var box min. This is looking familiar because I've done something like this in several of the other collision functions. It's going to be self.get min. That's going to be a vector three. Var box max. going to be the maximum point. I'm also going to do this for the axis aligned bounding box, which we are checking against. So I'm going to say var uh, other min is going to be ab that we're passing in as a parameter dot get min and var other max. Like so. And to check for collision between these two shapes, we are just going to write a rather uh, admittedly long expression. Uh, which is going to check to see if uh, the minimum point of one of one of these uh, bounding boxes, if of one of these shapes is uh, less than or equal to the maximum point of the other. So uh, box min dot x is less than or equal to other min. Other that should be other max dot x. Uh, and if uh, box max dot x is greater than or equal to other min dot x. So we're just uh, we're essentially going to be checking to see if any of the corners of um, of either bounding box intersects any of the uh, the sides of the other bounding boxes. So I can continue this um, box min dot y less than or equal to other max dot y and uh, box max dot y is greater than or equal to other min dot y. And this, this line of code is becoming really long. You could break this up over multiple lines if you want. Um, you could break this into multiple expressions. You could separate out each one of these uh, individual conditions if you would like. Uh, hey. What are we up to? Box min dot z is less than or equal to other max dot z. And this is going to be the last one, box max.z is greater than or equal to other min.z. Did I get all those? Um, min x, max x, max x, min x. This is almost as confusing as trying to copy out the cross product. Um, min y, max y, max y, min y, min z, max z, max z, min z. Okay, I think that's correct. Let us... Uh, let us run a little test. We can see if two axis aligned bounding boxes are overlapping each other. Um, that is one and uh, six for the other shape. We can see they are now overlapping. If I were to move one out, we can see that once they pulled apart, we are no longer overlapping. Uh, same on the other side. And uh, same up here and on the bottom. And if I were to check on the Z axis, uh, no longer colliding, collision detected, and no longer colliding on the top either. Okay, if you wanted to, you could check for things like edge cases, uh, particularly with the axis line bounding boxes. If you wanted to go into um, the test, uh, the test code, and instead of basically hard coding the uh, the dimensions of the axis line bounding box, uh, when when one of these test things is created, you could instead like. Uh, choose a random number between like two and eight for each of the uh, for each of the of, of the half extents of the axis line bounding box, and um, these things have a few more. 
Is that wrong? Oh, it should be I random range. So, um, access line bounding boxes have a few more edge cases than things like spheres. Uh, with the sphere, any point is basically treated the same uh, as, as any other point relative to the sphere because they are uh, uniform, they're symmetric. Uh, access line bounding boxes, you may wish to, um, let's see, randomly generate sizes and see if you can, um, like, have a box which is bigger than the other and uh, completely contains it and see if it behaves, uh, see if it, um, collision is detected appropriately, such as this one. We have a small one, we have a small axis line bounding box and a big one. Uh, the small one is what I'm going to be moving, and I see it is, a. Uh, it appears to be behaving correctly. Um, no longer overlapping, no longer overlapping. Up, down, I, don't, I know my ups and downs. Uh, you are barely overlapping, no longer. And on the top, no longer overlapping. Okay. That works. That is the ab against the ab. Once again, phrasing. So, uh, next we have abs and planes. Uh, by the way, if you're... I don't know if anybody else also has their uh, the little progress report that they're scribbling off every time one of these collision functions get implemented, but I would like to make a note to my future self to, uh, to show what that currently looks like. So we crossed off ab versus ab. Uh, ab versus plane. The way you would check an axis line bounding box against a plane would be um, if all of the points, all eight of the points of the axis line bounding box are on the same side of the plane, then uh, that means that the, uh, that the ab is not intersecting the plane. And there's a couple ways you could do this. Uh, you could uh, evaluate each of, the, each of the points, each of the eight uh, corners of the box, and see if the dot products of each of them versus the plane accounting for the distance from the, the plane's distance from the origin is uh, all have the same uh, sign as each other. So if they're all positive or all negative, each of the corners of the box are on the same side of the plane and that there is no collision detected. Otherwise, if different points are on different sides of the plane, then uh, that means that there is a collision detected. That would actually be a fair amount of work both to write the code for it and for the computer. So instead there is a couple other mathematical tricks you can use. Let me look to see if, did I implement absolute value in the vector class? I did. Okay, that's going to make my life slightly easier. Less typing, I mean. Uh, let me declare a local variable. I'm going to call that like a norm or something like that. And that is going to be the plain dot normal dot absolute value. Uh, this is going to be the, um, the normal of the plane. Uh, each of the components taking the absolute value, so they're all going to be positive. All right, next I'm going to declare myself another local variable. This is going to be var p lang. Don't want to try and type out the word length every time. Sure, why not? Uh, p length is going to be equal to self dot half extends dot dot. And that is going to be the dot product of uh, the axis align bounding box half extends against uh, the a norm, against the, uh, the absolute value of the normal. Uh, next var n dot is going to be equal to plane dot normal dot dot against um, the axis line bounding boxes position. Playing with dot products here. Uh, distanced, distance is going to be equal to n dot minus plane dot distance. So once again, and then uh, we can return a Boolean expression, which is return uh, the absolute value of distance is less than or equal to GTH. Okay, cool. I spelled it. Did not spell the parentheses correctly, though. Unfortunate. Uh, am I missing a... I am... I've got one too many parentheses there. So this should be checking a plane against an axis align bounding box. Let me start by, and I don't have a current way to rotate the plane. I just have a way to make a plane move up or down. Uh, let me uh, add a plane and let me add an axis line bounding box. Uh, we do have a shape, being, a shape overlap being detected. I can move you around. We are still detecting a shape overlapping. Okay, I can move you up or down and we are uh, correctly uh, detecting collision with the, uh, the axis line bounding box being up or down. I do not have a great way to um, to make the plane rotate, to make the plane have a normal that isn't straight up in the air. And uh, again, just for the sake of trying to catch a couple more edge cases, which which may or may not be in the code, um, my code should work. I have tested this before I sat down to record this video, but just assuming that I um, assuming that I copied it into the into this project on video correctly, I would like to check for edge cases. So I'm going to close that 
and I'm going to write myself a little bit of extra code to uh, to make the the plane rotate in a random direction when you create it the same way that we're um, uh, giving the axis the line bounding box a random size when we create it. So I'm going to say, okay, I have now improved the plane test shape. Uh, the plane now has its own rotation. And uh, when you hit the left and the right arrow keys, the plane will rotate in addition to just going up and down, or at least by up and down, I mean uh, moving closer or farther to the origin. And um, it will be drawn in the appropriately correct place. And that actually took me a couple minutes to figure out how to actually make it draw in the place where I wanted it to, but uh, never mind. So plane is now generated at a random position. You may have seen it flash on the screen for a frame or two. Uh, this is the uh, this is the plane. It's more or less on the on the ground. You can see it's intersecting the uh, the point. If I were to test it against a sphere, okay. Once again, it's uh, it's going to move up and down. It's going to rotate, and it's going to detect a detect a collision or not. Uh, just as you would expect, if you were to uh, add a, what is it, number six is going to be another axis line bounding box. We can check the plane against the against the ab, and we will be detecting plane, uh, a collision or not. So we're just barely clipping through the uh, the plane there on the top, and we are overlapping no longer. All right, and if I rotate the plane, it may, it, sh it should come back around, I think, to... Oh, nope, it's uh, it's not close enough. If I move the plane down and then rotate it, we will be overlapping it again. And only one side of the plane is drawn because the uh, back face culling is turned off and I have uh, only made the plane one-sided. Anyway. Let's see, those are uh, those are abs and planes. All right. Figuring out the uh, figuring out the test and how I was supposed to draw the plane was more annoying than I wanted, to it, wanted it to be, but we got there in the end. I'm pleased to report that so far all of the functions work, all of the collision detection works. That's always a good sign. Uh, what am I doing? What's the last one? Um, that is the ab, and I need to, the last one I need to implement is plane versus plane. Okay. Let me scroll over to that in my notes. Uh, where is the plane? Here we go. Okay, so we're gonna break out the cross product for, um, for plane versus plane. And I'm going to declare myself a local variable. I'm gonna call it cross. That's not a reserved word, right? That's not a reserved word. Uh, cross is going to be equal to self.normal.crossproduct uh, versus the plane.normal. So we're going to be taking the cross product of one plane uh, against the other plane. Uh, again, the cross product returns a vector which is at a 90 degree angle to both vectors. So there are, there's only really one uh, condition under which two planes will never intersect each other, and that would be if the two planes are different distances from the world origin and if the two planes are parallel, and there are a couple different ways you can figure out if two planes are parallel. You could, for example, compare their normals. Uh, you could take the dot product of their normals and see if they're pointing in the same direction or opposite directions, and that would indicate that the planes are parallel. Uh, since I'm using the cross product, uh, I'm instead going to uh, simply return uh, a condition, which is going to be cross dot, uh, let's say magnitude is greater than zero or self.distance equals equals plane.distance. If, uh, if two planes distances are, are equal, if two planes distances from the world origin are the same, then um, it is guaranteed that they will intersect eventually, either if they're the same plane, if, um, if the normal is the same, if the normals of the two planes are the same, or if the normals are not the same, then they're going to intersect each other regardless. So let me run the game. That code looks correct. Um, let me see, let me generate a plane, and that's gonna be the like the first plane. And let me generate a second one. That's that's sticking out at a funny angle. Give me another. Alright, the problem with randomly generating planes is that they uh they sometimes are not facing in a direction that I can really see very well due to the lighting. And I can I can rotate the uh plane one uh in any direction that I like, and they will always intersect because they're the same distance from the world origin, that being zero. And um, I can, uh, they will always intersect. If I were to move this one up and if I were to uh, rotate it in exactly the right way, you will uh, see for a single frame, and I don't know exactly where it is, but you will be able to see for a single frame that the planes are not overlapping. 
Okay, I've been sitting here for a little while trying to rotate the planes exactly so that they are parallel to each other and will not be intersecting, and I have not been able to, to hit it perfectly. So instead, let me just hard code it. Uh, let me just go back to the tests and to show that they are working. Uh, the rotation for the pl for the test plane self dot rotation is as uh, always going to be zero, so they're always going to be pointing in the same direction. And uh, numpad seven, numpad three, shapes overlap. If I move one up or down, you can see that they no longer overlap. And if I if they're exactly the same, if I move them back to the origin, of course now I can now I can get the timing exactly right so that I can land them back exactly on top of each other uh, you can see that you can see that the uh, the planes are overlapping boy now I'm able to do it with consistency too is um it's just plus plus and minus minus on the on the rotation anyway those are planes let's see boy that took a while I I spent a lot of time noodling around with getting the planes to rotate in a satisfying way and then I spent a lot of time noodling around trying to like make the test look good Anyway, that's fine. It is what it is. Uh, we're just going to check that the uh, magnitude of this vector is greater than zero. If uh, the cross product of two vectors that are, uh, that are the same will just be zero. Because having a third vector that's parallel to that doesn't really make sense. That's perpendicular to that doesn't really make sense. So it'll just be a zero vector. We have implemented uh, all of the basic shapes against all of the other basic shapes. Uh, so points, spheres, abs, and planes. Uh, next time, we're going to talk about ray casting. And we're going to start filling in the ray casting functions and uh, making more progress towards the, uh, the, the filled-in progress report. Okay. That hasn't been quite as much fun as spheres, but fun nonetheless. Uh, most of the time when you deal with a plane in a 3D collision world, it's going to be something like the floor. And it's not going to be rotated in an interesting way. It's just going to be sitting on the floor. It's just going to be pointing upwards. Uh, you may have another like death plane below the floor just in place just in case the player or someone else manages to like fall through it just in case or uh, if you're making a platformer something like that but anyway those are planes regardless if you want the code for this uh, check the video description did I commit this last change I did not commit this last change I should probably uh do that uh, the last two plane functions did I do I did ab ab and uh, plane. Did I forget one? There, I feel like there should be... Nope, they're both there. Did I commit something else uh, earlier in the past? Oh, I'm an idiot. I just have to scroll down. Okay, there was more at the bottom of this. Yes, we added three functions. Um, three ab and plane functions. If you want the code for this, uh, check for the GitHub repository in the video description. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these tutorial tutorials and one let's make a tower defense game, plus a whole bunch of let's plays, so if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there will be links to that in all the usual places. You can see your name in the credits or get these videos a day early or see my future plans or that sort of thing. I hope you all found that useful, and I will see you all later. Let's see, self dot half, half extent, half extents dot x times uh, a norm dot x plus self dot half extents dot y times a norm dot y plus self dot, you can probably guess what this third term is going to be, half extents dot z times a norm dot z. You know what, this is basically the dot product, isn't it? Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Sindra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end here, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.